And how are we going to solve global poverty? Give everyone a million dollars. But wait, aren't we already doing that? Hello good Versavites people, Colin R. Turner here with another thrilling episode for you. Ask any kid what would happen if you give everyone a million dollars. Probably most kids will say, yeah, yeah, great idea. But of course there'll be one smart kid who will say, no, 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 it's going to wreck the economy, it's going to uh, create havoc with the markets, it's going to cause inflation. And they're right, I mean it's economics 101, isn't it? You know, you don't just bloody keep printing money to solve the problem of poverty is a ridiculous idea. It's what happened in Zimbabwe, you know, a few years ago they were like printing billion and trillion dollar notes. Absolutely ridiculous carry on. In Germany in the Second World War they even tried to weaponize that. They said well let's print a load of forged five pound notes and drop them all over Britain to destroy the economy. Everyone knows that basically when you keep funneling money into the economy it wrecks the economy. But we are doing that. We are doing that every day, every year, pretty much every country all over the world. And I'm going to explain why. In the States, I'm going to talk about the States because it's the one that's most easiest to get data on. In the States, for example, depending on who you listen to, the inflation rate is currently about 7%. But 7%, if you take that as a value, I mean, that's, that's a doubling rate every 10 years. Okay, 7% sounds like a small, Thing, but it's don't let that fool you. In 10 years that means that your your apple is going to cost twice the price in 10 years than it did then. So that's a price doubling every 10 years. That's bloody insane. And then of course what happens is because prices keep going up, the wages are still trying to catch up with the with the cost of living and that's creating pressure on, on people and uh, on the economy in general and uh, so it creates this bad cycle of just uh, trying to catch up with inflation all the time. In the States actually the house prices are between two and eight times the average income at the moment which is really really crazy. I'm going to want to talk a little bit more about houses later but it's become so the cost of living is just getting harder and harder and harder on people and really you would think the opposite would be happening that things would be getting cheaper and cheaper and people be getting paid more but no the opposite is happening the, the the divide between what you can earn and what you need to spend is just getting bigger and bigger all the time so I want to show you why I think that inflation is going up and why we are effectively doing the one thing that economists would always say is a bad idea and that is printing money and the way we're doing it is basically through debt Okay, I'm going to run down through some numbers for the, the US, okay? Personal debt, people like you or me, in the States is running now currently at $14.5 trillion, okay? Corporate debt, which is money owned by businesses, shops and uh, corporations, is running at like $20.6 trillion. Another enormous amount of money. I'll put all this into context later. And then, of course, you have federal debt, which is the money the government owes to either itself or to some other country or God knows who. And that's currently running at $27 trillion. Okay, so the total of you add up those three debts of the personal, corporate and federal debt, it comes to $62 trillion, right? An enormous sum of money, an enormous sum of money. Or in Ireland, as we say, it's a good night out. But now I want to also take that figure and I want to show how much of that figure is actually money that has actually been newly created. Now, not a lot of people know this, but the majority of money that comes into the economy comes through commercial loans, through bank loans. So if you go in and borrow $100,000, 10,000 of those dollars is from the bank's vault and 90,000 is from literally the guy typing the number onto the screen into the computer. That's a fact. Look it up, uh, the Bank of England even admitted such in a document in 2014. You can look at the link below. Fractional reserve lending creates the majority of mon new money into the economy. Right, so if you take that measure of 90% of that, then the 90% of the 62 trillion is 56 trillion dollars, okay? 
Now, on top of that, in the States, they also do a thing called quantitative easing. Well, they do that in a few countries, and that's basically where they're selling bonds to uh, the Federal Reserve to create more cash. And that, in the States, is currently running $700 billion, a mere billion. So, if you add up all the, the debts, personal, corporate, and federal debt, Add on top of that, the 90% of that, which is money that was actually literally created out of thin air, then add on top of that the quantitative easing, the total of all those three sums is a whopping $119 trillion. Now, if you divide that by the population, it comes out at just under $360,000 per person. Why is this important? Okay, it's not, I'm not talking about the debt. Obviously, debts have to be repaid, right, you know? So, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the flood of new money into the economy. And when you borrow money from the bank or whoever, the money is new to you and it's going to cause you to interact with the market differently. And then on top of that, on the whole economy, you have all this flood of new money as well arriving at the economy. And that is where all the inflation is coming from. And that is why wages are always trying to chase cost of living and always trying to chase the price of houses. It's where it's coming from. It's basically free money that we're printing, injecting into the economy every day, every month, every year, all the time. And it's the one thing that any half-wit of economist will tell you is a faux pas, something you just don't do to save the economy. But we're doing it left, right and centre. And it's not sustainable because it's just kicking the can down the road. We're, I mean, when exactly is all this money going to be paid back? Well, it's not. And even if you pretend that it was going to be paid back. Could you imagine the colossal amount of ecological excavation we would have to do to, to convert the earthly resources into something that's going to pay that back? I don't know, for me, I just think the whole debt thing is ridiculous because I want to ask you this question, right, about house prices. What do you think a house would cost if there was no such thing as a mortgage? If it was just, just never existed. Isn't the price of a house actually linked to the accessibility of the debt? People think like houses are so damn expensive, you gotta get a big damn loan to pay for that house. But I think it's the other way around, versa vice, as I would say that the house price is actually increasing to service the accessibility of debt. If we cancel every mortgage, or if we cancel the possibility of ever getting a mortgage in the morning, somehow, there's no way houses would be still being selling for $350,000 as they are, as the average house price in the States today. There's no way a house price would be that much. We would find other ways, we would, innovate, we would find new solutions to solve that problem. Those solutions are out there today. I mean, people are goddamn printing houses in 24 hours. This, all this technology is there to do that. But it's not profitable to do it like that. It's much more profitable just to get a fucking huge big loan, to buy a huge big fucking house with bricks and mortar and pay for that forever. This is the way it's done. And because we keep doing that, we're forcing ourselves into a cycle that we have to keep doing that. So the prices stay high, and there's just no way you can get a house without getting a big loan to match. Anyway, hope you had a little bit of fun with this. It's been uh, quite instructive for me looking up these uh, numbers on the US economy. It's really quite scary, you know, the this, this sort of stuff that goes on that we just completely oblivious to you know we just assume that that's that's the way it is you know i would love to sit down with a like a, a mainstream economist someday and 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 talk about all this stuff maybe i'll do that that would make a nice video for the future but anyway um thanks a lot for watching guys uh, do subscribe to versavice.tv new website coming along there and um i'm going to see you guys next time ciao